I painted these pairs on ampersand gesso board, which had about a inch and a half uh, side on it. So I screwed it onto a board and put this onto the easel so that I could paint down the edges. This is the back of the board. And then that way, when you have it on the easel, you can paint all around on all the edges and you don't get your brush and hand down into the tray on the bottom of the easel or on the top. That makes it much easier for getting into the pairs that you're painting. This was my setup um, of the five pairs. And then I turned the light on. And then you can get started painting on it. I sketch the underpainting with uh, burnt umber and then fill in the main color of the objects, the base color or the body color. Uh, when I do this, I try to do them all so you can get a better idea and try to get in the main shape correctly. And so I corrected my drawing here on this one. Um, I use the biggest brush I can use. Uh, the painting is 6 by 12, so it doesn't require a huge brush, but I don't want to paint too small either because I didn't get bogged down in details. And I am pretty much a detail painter anyway. Um, I'm using the Winsor Newton water cleanable, mixable paints because I am allergic to the turpentine or something that gives me a headache when I paint with it. And I found that these are the best paints for me for that. I don't, I still have to have the room open, but I don't have nearly as much problem with that as I before. I also painted in the shadows first and then went into the background. For the background, I paint the left hand side the darkest because the light is coming from the left. And then I paint the right hand side the lightest in this case because that's where the light is hitting. So, this also gives you your highlighted side of your still life or fruit is against the dark and the dark side is against the light. So it gives you a lot more uh, vibrancy and light in your painting. The tabletop is the lightest part because the uh, light hits on the table which is flat and uh, the darkest part of course on the upright objects is on the right side and I work into the shadows I mix um, a darker color of the body color which in this fruit was kind of a reddish orange on the one on the left and then I put green and blue into the shadow color but first I darken it with a darker red for instance put a lizard and crimson into cadmium red and make it darker and then then add the complement if you don't do that you get the gray or the brown and it's not nearly as colorful and lively as it is with that. Uh, use a smaller brush for painting in the stems and uh, correcting some of the edges a little bit. Um, put a little bit of complement in the white. Don't paint with pure, pure white anytime. Um, the left hand side was a little dark right there at the front of the large pair because the light would be coming through there quite strong. I thought I'd lighten that up a little bit, make it a little bit livelier. And in the finish of the painting, I went ahead and put these colors around on the edges as well. I didn't, I decided not to paint the edges black or a solid color. I just went ahead with the background color around the edges on the top sides and bottom. I uh, put on the highlights larger than you want them and then cut them down a little bit. That always seems to work better, make them a little more believable. Uh, you can correct oils. I tried to have some soft edges and not have all the edges hard because that, uh, when the edges are very defined and strong that the item comes forward, you can see on the tall pair that looks like a gourd, the shadow line is very hard on that. And uh, as I went through later, I corrected that, softened that and tried to keep the edges of that one soft as it went into the background more. Um, have the more defining ones on the items that are closer to the front. This really helps give dimension to your painting. And uh, like I said right there, that line was very hard. And you'll see in the finished painting that I corrected that as, uh, as I was finishing up.
Um, I probably painted about two hours total on this painting. Uh, I did it pretty quickly so that I could film it and not have quite so much film to go through. <laughs> but uh, you can see in the darks, I never use black either. That's uh, dark red, another dark red and green, a little bit of blue into it to make it nice and dark. And tried to make the stems as close as what they were on the real pairs. Uh, the one on the left came in a little sock that held it, and I thought that was really cool. I almost left it on for the painting. Uh, in the highlights, I always use the complement. So the red apple has green in the highlight, and the green apple has red in the highlight. That always makes it vibrate your... Uh, they say your eye doesn't focus on the compliments. It doesn't blend them, so uh, makes it have a little bit of movement to it. This was the painting before I finished completely. Uh, I took it down and let it sit for a while and then finished, went back and finished the stems, as you can see here. I hope you enjoyed this, and if you have any questions, send me an email. I'll look at my webpage, and I'd love to hear from you. I love to talk art.